I would also like to add a little bit of more color to the problem. So first part of uh, problem which we are seeing with COVID, it's a very, very dynamic situation where like uh, we are learning every day what's happening. So systems have to adopt pretty much on hourly basis of uh, how we deal with the problem. So that's one part, like how do we deal with the dynamic nature of the problem? Second part is as uh, uh, like a speaker before me rightly said, we have to save our nations. If you see in the countries where this pandemic has uh, gone worse than India, almost 20 to 25% of the clinicians get affected, which creates this compounding problem that patients keep growing and the clinicians keep reducing. Uh, and that's like, uh, that, that hits the peak much faster. And then clinicians are also getting burned out, working harder. The, the good thing uh, or the light at the end of the tunnel is that 80% of the patients can be managed remotely. And that's what uh, we help with. So we have a, a, a four point approach to this problem. So first uh, part is tracking. So we can track uh, people's vitals. We, uh, we, we run periodic health checks to make sure that nothing is getting worse. And we can also track people's location. So we can track people from all the aspects to understand A, they are not getting worse. And if they're getting worse, we know it uh, much earlier than later. Second part is uh, how to educate these people because right now healthcare workers are so busy from clinicians to the hospital staff that nobody has got time to educate people. And what ends up being is they're getting the information from all these unsolicited, unsolicited resources like WhatsApp, TikTok, Facebook. And uh, there is, uh, it's, it becomes very, very hard to contextualize the education per patient. That's one, one more thing which we are doing is like, how do you understand who the patient is and what they need to learn and uh, not only uh, train them but also train their families so that they can they can deal with the patient uh, third part uh, of the solution is how do you have the constant connection going on with the patient so for example right now if a doctor wants to see the patient either they have to go on a, a, a and see them in clinic or they can jump on a video call both of them are inefficient because you're blocking the time of the clinician so the reality is how do we have the constant dialogue happening without clinicians getting too involved and things only escalate to clinicians when their time is required. So we also uh, help uh, patients with the communication with the first layer, which can, you know, nurses and healthcare workers can communicate. And then only the people which require uh, seeing the patients, uh, require seeing doctors, see the doctor. So what happens is overall, if you take this approach, of educating through a system, tracking through a system, connecting through a system, uh, and also keep adding new tools like stress management, et cetera, which are required for isolation management. Ultimately, what we enable is to multiply doctors. We uh, have done our own calculations and we can multiply a doctor's impact by 22 times. So a doctor can uh, uh, remotely take care of the 22 times more patient than they can do in a, in a physical setting by having all this support. And the, also these doctors are, are not getting infected. So pretty much what you are doing is you're multiplying your workforce to take care of the wider set of patients. And that's uh, something which we feel is a need of the R. That how do we manage patients and how do we protect our clinicians? And these are the both things which we have worked on. Mental health, we realize this is very, very important. So all the care management we are providing, mental health is a big component of it. Uh, we have put together a team of uh, behavior scientists and mental health professionals to constantly look at evolving mental health landscape for COVID, like how we can help people with managing the stress uh, and in isolation. So that's a big part of the care which we provide. Second part uh, is uh, was a question about the curve. So the curve is actually like, you know, will depend upon how we behave as clinicians, how we behave as people, because the curve is created by us uh, and we are the only people who can control it. So I agree with the, my fellow panelists that it is, you know, it needs to be extended after until 30th of April, but uh, the behavior how we change, how we cope with it will, will play a big, big role. Like we don't need uh, things like with incidents which are happening, uh, you know, uh, in multiple places right now. And uh, third part is uh, one more thing which we say, like, and uh, we are anticipating 
that although COVID uh, will end, but these patients need to be longitudinally monitored for multiple things uh, for an extended period of time. And that's something which we have also been investing a lot of effort to make sure like patients who, because what the impact on bodies are going to be, uh, they're not very well understood. And these patients need longitudinal tracking and management even after COVID. So with that, uh, I'll end my thoughts. Thank you.